Good morning, everyone. Happy Saturday. Um, it's my honor to be here, and thank you for being here today. So um, what I will do is I would like to talk to you about the use and integration of the Conversation Map tools here in the U.S. as well as internationally. So my focus is going to be about um, showcasing, even though the uh, you know, world is very diversifying, however, the use and integration of the map to, uh, tools is very universal everywhere. So that's what my hope for today is. Um, as Joellen mentioned, I'm a lead facilitator for the Conversation Map Tools. What that means is that I work with the local healthcare professionals on the use of the map tools within their healthcare system. So therefore today I'm going to represent the stories that I hear from those educators, and many of you are here today. And then also, I'm really here to celebrate diabetes education because um, the MAP tools are there to deliver diabetes self-management education and support. So it's really about showcasing what um, MAP as a tool and how it delivers diabetes education everywhere. So my disclaimer is that I work for Healthy Interactions. And Healthy Interactions is an educational company and our primary mission and goal is to help people with chronic conditions to change behaviors or modify their behaviors so they will become healthier. Um, as Marty said, healthier self-manager of their um, condition. So with, the, um, with behaviors, it is a good and a bad thing because with um, unhealthy behaviors, things get worse with disease management versus healthy be behaviors, things get better. So our mission is really help people with chronic conditions to improve um, their health behaviors and become healthier um, individuals. So I've got two learning objectives for today, and I'll be speaking for about 35 minutes or so. And then we will have time for questions as well. So um, is to uh, exemplify the use of the conversation map tools here in U.S. and outside U.S., as well as uh, share with you some of the program outcomes and deliverables. So it all started in Canada in 2006, where this initiative was more of a local scope in collaboration with Canadian Diabetes Association. And then later in uh, 2007, what Marty was mentioning, we uh, launched this program in the U.S. with our wonderful collaboration with American Diabetes Association. And with American Diabetes Association, we were able to reach about 30,000 healthcare professionals. 30,000, 29,000 as of January. That's a lot of healthcare professionals. Um, here in the U.S., we have, um, I, I believe, about 16,000 certified diabetes educators. So half of the people that, uh, that are using the MAP tools are not certified diabetes educators, but more so of the clinicians, nurses, dietitians, physicians, pharmacists that are providing diabetes education. So this, um, with, as I speak, you'll be able to also see that the MAP tools do way more than... Um, providing education. They're also a, a very good tool to grow skills in diabetes self-management education because as clinicians, we grow our skills by providing more diabetes education. So the more we see patients, the more we interact with patients, the more we um, teach patients, the more we learn. And that's how we become more skillful in our role as a diabetes educators. Then this wonderful program came to, um, to UK in a local Diabetes UK um, partnership, and at uh, this time we have reached over 3,000 healthcare professionals who have been trained on the use of the MAP tools. When I say train, that means that they have the actual MAP, all of the MAP tools, and they're able to use them. And uh, the training happens by um, local professionals who speak the, um, the language. So I'm not the one going everywhere and training everybody, but we have expert trainers, elite facilitators, who are uh, 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 qualified to really mentor and then support the local use and integration of the MAP tools. And in 2008, um, it became global. And uh, um, global, that's a lot of countries because it's over 120 countries. So this... Uh, this approach, even though it's, you know, in the different countries in the over 38 languages, regardless of that, people around the world in over 120 countries are experiencing the same patient-centered, learner-centered integration that is engaging, empowering, and really focusing on, on the individual needs, even though it's a group setup. So in a, in a group of 
three to ten people, even though it's a group education, each patient is getting a very individualized care. So this is a short video to show you a typical MAP session. The conversation map, which is in front of you, is designed to engage a group of people in a conversation that is both informative and meaningful, so then you can learn from each other. So, Karim, what are your concerns about living with diabetes? Well, you know, as a busy professional, I always find myself in the airport or traveling and just having to make, you know, the right food choices, mm -hmm. and it's just been very difficult. So, I like to find out, like, what are the better choices that I can make? Mm -hmm. How about you, Nelson? My doctor talked about strict diet, exercise, medication. I just hate all those things. Is there anything that's more natural, holistic, so to speak, that, that you do that could help? I, d I don't think I can do this. It's just it's way too much. Um, I mean, I wish you guys all the luck. You're sounding like you're very fearful, angry that you have it. Why me? You you're know? just angry. Oh, sure, you're angry, and you're, you're very scared. I can tell just by looking at your face. I think we all probably felt the same way when we were first diagnosed. Oh, sure, it's natural. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know what to say to encourage you, except that we've been there, and I think we all have a little more hope now that we can control it. It is manageable. I've and Estella, mm -hmm. diabetes is so difficult. Sometimes when you do it as a family and you all can support each other, mm -hmm. you'll be more successful mm -hmm. in the end. That'd be good. It's like going on a diet. One person in the house is on a diet, everybody else is eating everything. Okay, one person feels left out. This way, if you're all doing it together, nobody knows the difference. Support really? groups yeah. are great. Right. What um, happens to you, Nelson, when you eat too, much, too many carbohydrates? I need. I take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> well, those are the bad carbs. Yeah, yeah, right away, you know, those are the bad ones. No, but I mean, is there something that tells us what's a bad carb and what's a good carb? What's a good carb? Uh, whole grain. Whole grain. Mm -hmm. Whole grains. Whole grains. Wheat. What's not beans. good carb? Bread, white bread. White bread. White bread. Flour. Potatoes. A lot of Sugar. pasta. White we find. Oh, white yeah. Yeah, pasta. Yes. So you can see that um, I really wasn't teaching. They were teaching themselves. So it's, as a MAP user, it's, a, it's a complete pleasure because I'm just sitting there and relaxing, having a nice time while people are enjoying themselves. So then later today, um, Chris is going to get you through your own MAP experience so you can experience it from a perspective of a learner, not necessarily as a person with diabetes, but as a healthcare professional um, who you are, but experience it so you can experience the engagement to better illustrate or demonstrate how um, this process goes. So you can see that it all starts with, um, before people, like uh, uh, people with diabetes eventually learn, they need to know, they need to believe that they need to know before they can learn and wanting to know. And then once they, they know, they'll be able to um, act on their behaviors um, and then um, as a result of improve their, uh, their daily tasks or daily behaviors and become better self-managers of their diabetes. And that's what we um, do. We, we deliver those personal health engagements that create behavior change. So why, why, is it, why does it matter that people need to be engaged in their self-care management? So we know that engaged people are able to better perform in their self-care behaviors. They use um, self-management services more often. They also report high medication adherence. And they're also more likely than doctor to, doctors to initiate discussions about their symptoms that are related to diabetes and medication use. And they're more involved in the decision making, as well as 10 times more likely to have a high patient satisfaction scores. And overall, they're just they just have a better functional status because they're engaged in their care, and therefore they're more um, they own their condition. So they're more likely to act on those things that they need to do to feel better. So what I'm going to do next for the next few minutes, I would like to give you examples of uh, how the, the program or the, um, the MAP tools are used in different countries. So I have divided this uh, presentation into uh, three categories because the MAP tools do um, a little bit more than educate people with diabetes. Well, they also advocate for better access for diabetes education because, um, I, as I have mentioned, over 
80,000 healthcare professionals throughout the world have been trained on the use of a conversation map tool. So those healthcare professionals are using the, uh, the map tools in uh, different places. They're using them in Africa. They're using them in Canada and Poland, all of those places. So, so the people with um, diabetes are getting very standardized education no matter where they are. But they also uh, advance our profession of diabetes education. And advancement happens because the healthcare professionals are able to have a curriculum that is evidence-based and is providing the best in patient education. So in UK, um, the reason that I have selected UK is because it's a good example of where these MAP tools are um, fitting into the existing healthcare system. And in UK, the diabetes education system is very well developed and uh, uh, established. They have... Um, uh, our equivalent to certified diabetes educators, clinicians who are very skilled and well prepared to provide high stand standards in diabetes education. So in UK, we have over 3,000 healthcare professionals trained on the use of a conversation map tools. And what we have there is kind of like, um, it's called NICE Criteria Toolkit, which is very unique because the centers who are uh, submitting for the reimbursement um, they're able to use the map tool to really fit into the reimbursement system. So like kind of in here, we have uh, AD recognized programs or AD recognized programs. In UK, um, the programs have to be supported by the national sick funds and then um, but there are specific regulations that they have to audit, they have to have an evidence-based intervention, has to be provided by school clinicians, and so on. So these, um, uh, the conversation map tools really fit into that um, fairly uh, complex and sophisticated system. So um, we have surveyed the healthcare professionals who have been trained there um, on the use of a conversation map tools, and this is some of the feedback that we um, have been provided from them. And this is after they attend a training to know how to use the map. So, uh, and after they attend a, um, a training to use the map, we often call them facilitators because they're able to facilitate um, uh, the conversation map tools. So, um, so uh, upon of the completion, over 90% of those um, um, are uh, map users or ready to use the map uh, tools with people with diabetes. But this is interesting because it kind of asked the, the uh, diabetes educators in the UK, um, what about the tools makes it special? So the um, majority of them really value the fact that it stimulates discussion and peer interaction. It's kind of interesting because you would assume that, oh, people, it's good because uh, uh, people learn or something like that. But the majority of the, uh, the MAP users there actually like the fact that people talk, that people engage. And then it makes the group um, facilitating more interactive and engaging, increases concordance, which is the British word for like um, better relationship building with uh, patient and the healthcare professionals, and then uh, adherence and so on. So it just seems that the, the, the uh, diabetes educators in UK really value what the map tools are meant to deliver. So it's a good match. And then uh, this is also a good one because you can see that um, um, we ask if they're using the map as a main curriculum to provide diabetes education versus a supplement because these tools can be used either as a standalone curriculum when structured diabetes education is being provided. Like the information that Marty was saying that there is um, four map tools here in U.S., and the reason for that is because we have nine group education uh, hours uh, for, to provide diabetes of management education to be reimbursable. So um, in, in outside UA, the term is called like structured diabetes education. So, uh, so structured means that it's provided by qualified uh, professional and it's reimbursable and so on. So in UK, you can see that people are using it both as a structured diabetes education as well as supplement to the existing uh, curriculums or other um, ways of providing diabetes education. So um, this is um, how do they audit? Audit means evaluate the eff effectiveness. So uh, session evaluation only for majority. Some people don't audit. Uh, some people do clinical care markers. And then um, you can see that majority of the people look for like more of a satisfaction from a session. Ask the patient, you know, uh, 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 did you like this way of learning and so on. I always say that the best way to evaluate if the MAP tools are effective is if people keep on coming back uh, to the sessions and then we're able to 
invite them back and they want to be coming back, that means that the session was successful because that means that they're engaged and they're activated enough to come back. And diabetes education is really dose dependent. So the more we do it, the more we interact with, with people with diabetes, the better outcomes are happening. Israel. So Israel is unique, and I put them under advancement, is because it really advances the profession of diabetes educators there. So um, there's, I think at this moment, over like 500 um, uh, advanced level nurses who have been using the conversation map tools within their sick fund. So it's fully reimbursable within the different healthcare system. And it's very unique because all of the people with diabetes within that healthcare system are able to go to the conversation map tools as a whole curriculum. So there's four map tools in addition to additional ones, but at least four minimal. Um, and it's, um, what they do is they also take the a map, like a super map users, healthcare professionals who have been using a lot of it, and they mentor others. And right now, their plan is to really take it to the primary care, where um, people with diabetes um, uh, come and then get a lot of uh, um, you know, interactions with the primary care, with physicians. They are, the plan is to train the local nurses who, who are not advanced level um, diabetes educators uh, in uh, using the map to help them to reach out to more patients. Brazil. I have Brazil because it's Latin America and it's fun. Um, so Brazil, um, Brazil is cool because they use uh, a very multidisciplinary approach to this. So they have uh, a psychologist involved in diabetes education. They have a nurse. They have a dietitian and a physician. It's just so nice to see that those different multidisciplinary teams, but they're providing the same service. So it's really uniting them in that way. So they're using it in both private and uh, local um, hospitals and also in this program outside U.S. is in our partnership with uh, International Diabetes Federation. So it's developed in collaboration with IDF. And IDF has wonderful education, center of education. I think it's over 20 of them right now, or about 20 internationally. So Brazil has one of those IDF education centers, and they're using it. And they're really creating the best practice and exemplified to others that diabetes education is really a multidisciplinary approach, and it's a, 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 a it's dose dependent and we want to use evidence-based intervention and so on. So, so Brazil is doing a wonderful job. Turkey. The reason that Turkey is unique is because they take diabetes education when people with diabetes come. So a lot of times uh, they have sessions for people with diabetes in the mall. And what they, what, what, what's very unique because uh, everybody in the world has the same problem or the same challenge. People do not come back for diabetes education or don't want to come back. Like to retain the patient, once you activate the patient, to keep them coming back, that's a challenge. So they are very creative, actually. They have those graduation ceremonies. So um, in those malls, like people are more likely to come in because upon of the completion of a the program, they get a, a picture taken with their certificate. So they make it more um, fun, not like hospital kind of intervention. Um, but they do have a... a Wonderful team. Uh, over 70% of diabetes nurse educators in Turkey have been um, trained on the use of the conversation map too. So it's a big outreach, outreach there. Japan. Japan um, is uh, it's here to kind of represent the Asia component of this. Um, so in Japan, the reason that I put it as an advancement is because we launched in Japan in uh, 2008 and over 2,000 healthcare professionals have been exposed to the conversation map tools. But Japan was also looking into how many of those 2,000 healthcare professionals are using the tools. So they strategize with the local um, uh, association, which is called JEDEC, which is Japan Association of Diabetes Educators and Care, which is a, a healthcare professional uh, association. Again, like here in the U.S., we have AADE, and there they have JEDEC. So they, they launch a national campaign to really take out the, identify the best uh, um, diabetes educators and put those tools in the hands of those good diabetes educators so those diabetes educators are really driving the best practice and setting standards for diabetes education. So they have done a wonderful job with that, and then uh, the program is very successful in Japan. Africa. So Africa, um, notice that I have those little flags. Africa has uh, over 20 different countries that are part of this initiative. Um, and in Africa, um, the, the conversation map tools are really closely uh, 
um, manage and deployed with our partnership with International Diabetes Federation, but we have a program coordinator, her name is Ati, and she's working very closely with the local healthcare professionals to mentor them, to help them to integrate the conversation map tools. Because in, in, in Africa, it's not just access to diabetes education, but also helping um, healthcare professionals like physicians, pharmacists, to really develop skill sets to provide diabetes education. So, uh, so more attention is given because their, uh, their needs are different than uh, in different countries. And the way that they evaluate their uh, progress is they looked at the uh, knowledge scores, are people learning more, but also looked into their um, uh, clinical care outcomes and they sh have shown improvement. But it's very nice with, um, with this African partnership because in, in Africa, uh, diabetes education it just doesn't exist. So our partnership with IDF is really um, those, uh, those healthcare professionals, our expert trainers, they end up going to health ministries and then convincing health ministries to be able to appoint, let's say, a nurse, educator, or a physician or a pharmacist or whoever is there to, uh, to advocate for diabetes education. So, so it's amazing to see that uh, in Africa uh, that, uh, that, that strong advocacy where we almost build a profession of diabetes education is happening, and that's all in collaboration with International Diabetes Federation that they uh, that advocate for people with diabetes. So India. The reason that India is unique is because India t takes it to, um, and there's a lot of good use in a, like employee health. Um, because uh, the healthcare system in India is um, like typically self-pay, and then the public pay is is very is difficult to provide diabetes education because a, a, a physician might see 200 patients in a day, and the, and the profession of nurse is not very um, advanced level. So nurses are more like a technicians; they will not be in a position to educate uh, a, a person with diabetes. So what's interesting is they're building that profession by creating counselors, and those counselors are the ones that are becoming diabetes educators, and they're doing it like in employee health. Like, for example, uh, like in a big, uh, let's say, uh, uh, organization, they would have people who are employed, then they, as a benefit, they're able to, people with diabetes can attend diabetes education. So um, what's unique also is that uh, the, the, those counselors, uh, there are healthcare professionals, but more like public health. Uh, professionals, they, their knowledge about diabetes has uh, really improved. Like if you look at it for the pre, average pre-test score, there was three out of 10. Those are the people that already were working and educating people with diabetes. Years after, we started to use the map with one map session, it went up to eight out of 10. So those, those, those educators who previously were already teaching people with diabetes, their la knowledge level about diabetes or confidence was pretty low. So it's nice to kind of see that not only patients or people with diabetes are learning, but also the, uh, the educators are also learning. So outcomes and deliverables. I have a few um, information to kind of share with you how how, how do people measure their success? Because a uh, different country, different uh, healthcare system, different healthcare professionals, what's meaningful to them um, might be not meaningful to us. So as a program, uh, we really don't dictate uh, how people measure their success. We want people to measure what's, what's valuable to them and what, what will increase uh, the satisfaction within their healthcare system. So, uh, so the program is really designed anywhere, in U.S. or Africa or anywhere, to be outcome-driven, to produce better improvement in patient engagement. But it can be adapted from the big places as a, as a supplement to the existing system to fill the gap. Whatever people with diabetes come, we really want the map tools to, to be there and be available so the healthcare professionals can have a simple way to really provide high standards of diabetes education. Here in US, um, and Julia is going to talk a little bit more about that, um, the, the curriculum is, uh, the, the map tools, as Marty was showing, um, fit our existing um, ADA clinical practice standards. So it's a, you know, it's group education, it's patient-centered, but it's not just, you know, fun and education. It's really a curriculum. So it does have all of the content area that people with diabetes need to know in order to function uh, well within their medical condition. So in Australia, um, I just uh, took, a, uh, took a, an example of um, the outcomes for diabetes self-management education. 
Um, now we have a, a new updated um, position paper or guidelines. It was just published um, um, at this conference, so we know the diabetes self-management education and the uh, and outcome it produces. The time when I was doing that, I took um, as an example for DSME. We know that DSME works and it does reduce hemoglobin A1C. I have this out for you because the conversation map tools are there to really um, drive and deliver diabetes self-management education and support. So it, it, it is compatible. The, 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 whatever DSME is meant to deliver, the map is there to drive it. But there's other components. And we know that um, also DSME saves money in Australia. It is for every $173 Australian spent, there is over 2,000 uh, Australian dollars, dollars saved. So DSME is really effective, and it's, it does produce outcomes. just has to be delivered and provided. And if it is delivered and provided, it, it works as good as the best medication. It is like a pill. So I did divide my outcomes and deliverables into several categories to simplify it. Empowerment, self-care, clinical and cost implications. So we can kind of see different examples of different outcomes and how are they being measured. So Pakistan. Pakistan is really looking into empowerment and engagement. So it's interesting because in Pakistan, when we started working with Pakistan, it was always, well, our patients really want information. We're not gonna, the doctor is so important, the clinician is so important, they will never be able to interact and talk to us. And, and they, they want doctor to prescribe the right medication, want meet, they, want to be, they want healthcare professional to tell the people exactly what to do. And it ended up to be not the case because once I started to use the conversation map tools, people started to talk or engage. But what's very unique about this specific outcomes is that patients at the beginning of a session believed that the doctor was responsible for their diabetes self-care management. Upon of the completion of the MAP sessions, they took the ownership of their condition. I think it's wonderful to have the people, to give the people the power of owning their own condition, their own life. And that's the only way to improve clinical care outcomes by allowing people with diabetes to do what they know is right. So we're not telling them what to do and how to do. They know what to do. They know about diabetes. We're there to really support them in their journey, to really help them and partner with them to do better with their diabetes. Mm, Taiwan. The reason that I have Taiwan is because that uh, uh, they're... Um, um, uh, the, the very similar kind of situation this is um, published here was one of the posters uh, at ADA. So they found that people are more uh, adherent, and then they, uh, um, researchers concluded that three months after intervention using the MAP tools was more effective than the usual diabetes education. And this happens because sometimes people are just so used to using a PowerPoint, and then it's so much easier, they would assume, to use the PowerPoint. And, and the, the best way to kind of see if you're using whatever you're using, just compare map to a PowerPoint or the other way and see uh, what is the patient retention, what the patients are saying. So they did that, and they found out that within three months, the conversation map tools produce a better outcomes with their usual PowerPoint intervention that they do. In U.S., and this is just published. It was literally in diabetes spectrum this month. And the reason that I have this, and even though it's a small study, over 30 um, people, um, veterans, and, um, and it was a conversation map tools, only one tool was used, the journey, continuing the journey, med medication um, uh, tool. And the pharmacists were using it, and they looked into if it meet, met the needs of educating people about uh, medication. So this is a nice self-management uh, self kind of ref reflectory. Did the MAP tool deliver on what they wanted to teach the patient, which is good because we still have to teach. And we still want people to learn something from the sessions. So we're able to kind of look into um, what people learn and what people didn't learn, and as a result of that, kind of adjust to it. And Italy, I have Italy here because this is an example of, uh, um, uh, of the clinical care uh, outcomes improvement. In Italy, um, they already have a very um, patient-centered, very therapeutic healing diabetes education systems. So their physicians, endocrinologists, they, they have more time to talk to people with diabetes. They like conversation. They like fun. So, um, so, so it's an easy sell in terms of like, oh, we have people to talk. Um, um, we have this map that is all about kids. So it's kids with, uh, with, and the family members with diabetes. So early when they do it, it's just, the, the, it's meant for have like 
five to ten kids in a session, but they can only invite two kids because with those two kids, the whole family comes, so we have 20 or 30 people in the room. So they do like the discussion. They, they, they're, very, they're very patient-centered, but family-centered. So they, they just looked at their, if, the, if the MAP2 improves <coughs> clinical care outcomes, and it did. It lowered the fasting, glycemia, hemoglobin A1C, and BMI. But it was an outcome that was meaningful to them. I got Israel again, but this is just to kind of show you. Uh, sometimes people ask us, how do we make our administrators and our hospital to give us time so the nurse will uh, be able to see people with diabetes? Because the nurse has to do so many different things. Um, it, you know, the nurse does not have time to pe- pe- uh, uh, you know, see people with diabetes. We give the pe- person a handout and then... Uh, and then education, and they leave. And in Israel, they really, in order to, uh, to allow the sick fund to reimburse for that two or three positions of nurse educators in that healthcare system, that their full-time job is to go around to the patients' rooms or provide group education, they literally looked at the outcomes. They measured for six months, I believe, or six months or so, and then see if, this, uh, if the hemoglobin A1C and fasting blood glucose improved as a result of DSME, and it did. So they're able to justify it, and they have several full-time nurses now providing diabetes education. In the UK, I have just an example because sometimes we say that it's an indirect and direct cause implication. So in the UK, there's a very sophisticated diabetes education system. It's called Desmond. It's it's the same methodology as ours. It's the same thing because group education, patient-centered. So, however, it's fairly expensive to run. So one of the... um, educators wanted to see if the conversation map tools are provided the same interaction that Desmond does, and it showed that it actually provided the same interaction. The difference is that the map tools are cheaper because, you know, they're always free of charge to healthcare professionals. So um, in addition to additional things, they decided to incorporate into different places. This is just an example of another indirect cause. It's just they found that there's less hypoglycemia with the use of the um, diabetes education, you know, hypoglycemia, frequent hypoglycemia is expensive. So this is an indication is we educate people about uh, uh, um, hypoglycemia management and prevention, being more proactive. Um, it will eventually c- it cost less money in Taiwan. So um, I'm almost done with my presentation, but we do have a, a review of all of the studies. What's nice about these studies is that they're not health interaction studies. They're just local studies that, uh, that healthcare professionals have done to measure what's meaningful to them. So that is available, so you can, um, can we have a summary of it, so you can go on our website and it's, it's there, if you would like to kind of learn a little bit more about that. And um, that concludes my talk. Um, thank you for your attention. I think I did it in less than 40 minutes. You did good. I, I talked fast. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Does anyone have any questions for Barbara? Do we have some? The microphone. There's a man over there. See him? Questions? Yeah, thank you very much for your presentation. I work in a developing country. The issue of diabetes self-management education, many research projects, just like the ones you outlined, shows that it's beneficial. We have done uh, studies in Africa and Caribbean looking at the perceptions of nurses and dietitians towards diabetes self-management. And the result is obvious. It's presented downstairs at the poster section. The result hinges on the economic limitations and the infrastructure and training. I want to know your view about the perceptions of healthcare providers in developed countries, Western Europe and North America. What are the perceptions of health care providers in self-management education? As that of uh, developing countries, uh, as you must know, uh, hinged on economic limitations. Thank you.
It's, it's brilliant, and thank you for doing what you're doing. Um, 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 uh, IDF, International Diabetes uh, um, Federation, uh, there is a, a publication that is it's called Diabetes Atlas. It looks at the different perceptions and the impact of what diabetes as a condition does and the perception of uh, like what the trends are. So there is a good resources to kind of reference that. But my personal uh, 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 personal experience with working with uh, healthcare professionals from Africa is that uh, uh, the leaders yourself uh, who believe in diabetes education, um, it's not just to provide the diabetes education, but there's also a, a huge sense of advocacy to convince others, the ministries of health and so on. It's just at the big, it's, it's, it's an infancy. But the, what's good about Africa is maybe there is less of those healthcare professionals who are providing diabetes education and advocating for it, but they're exceptional. <laughs> like sometimes I often, like when, I, when I'm there and I hear their speeches, I'm like, I'm motivated. I want to be in Africa, provide education. Because we really Really have to sell it, you know what I mean? So it's so it's growing, and then with with the initiative with IDF that is really, uh, you know, providing the. Um stronger education. There's a curriculum that IDF has that actually teaches healthcare professional skill sets and, and uh, not just knowledge, what they need to uh, educate people about, but also skills necessary to have that therapeutic healing environment. So it's happening. Sometimes I often think that some places in Africa have better education than we have in some of the places in Chicago that I come from. So it's getting there. Any other good questions? I have one. Mm -hmm. Can the maps be used by peer educators? At this time, the, the conversation map tools are meant to be used by healthcare professionals because they do need to know diabetes education uh, or, and, a, and a clinical content to share that. So, so, so they do have to have that capacity. So at this time, it has to be used by healthcare professionals. I think it's one more. Please, give, please bring your microphone. My question is, have we tried these conversation tools in a, um, I guess, web or internet, so someone who is remote? Yes. Uh, so in certain countries, like, for example, in UK, uh, here in US as well, uh, people can interact uh, remotely as well to, uh, with that. So it's a virtual conversation map. So it's available, yes. So thank you so much for your attention. Thank you very much.